Hey, what's up everyone? Free to play gaming here again. Uh, late night here for me. You can see just by looking at my screen here how far behind in this game I am. I'm having a lot of trouble trying to balance this game with Summoner's War, trying to play both games, trying to manage the guilds, and going to work full time and being a dad and all that stuff. So, r stretched real thin here. I apologize for that. I'm. I have viewers who are interested in the Loon Saga, and I have viewers who are interested in Summoner's War. And frankly, um, I'm enjoying Summoner's War right now more than I am a Loon Saga, even though I was super excited to start playing this game. And the main reason behind that is I can't really play this from my phone quite as easily. And the battles just seem to take so long. I mean, each battle takes close to 10 minutes now. I'm pretty far along in this game. I would say. You know, I'm in uh, the 22nd area. And each battle takes like pretty close to 10 minutes just for me to work my way and kill through the monsters. That's even on, you know, just doing the auto battle. And the energy refills so fast, they give you one energy every minute, and I can't even keep up with this, which for a lot of players, that's a really good thing. But I feel like I'm missing out because I, I always have energy and arena points just sitting here. And even these arena battles. You know, once you get around the 100 rank, they start taking a long time to whittle down the players. So, I got some gripes with this game, and, and I'm not... There's a ton of features with it, which I'm not totally familiar with. So, I feel like when I'm doing these videos, I'm not giving you guys the best advice I could be. I know the game just came out, so I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to start learning a lot more about which cards are good. Hopefully start getting some good 3 and 4 star cards that I can share with you guys. So I'm not giving this game up by any means. I'm not giving Summoner's War up by any means. But uh, I think most of my time is going to be spent on Summoner's War. Doing more videos on that because I feel like I can be more helpful to the players over there. The player base. So I want to do a quick update on the guild here. If you guys just want to watch my gameplay in this game... And I'll just be doing some general talking. I'm going to do some, I got some rare scrolls to summon some four star cards here. So I'm going to do that a little later too. Check out our guardian here in the guild. And this is what kind of stinks is I'm excited about the guild features. And that's what all the guild members are really excited about too. They want to, you know, get the guild up super good. But that's only 20 people. 20 people out of, well, I don't know how many subscribers I have right now. But more than 20 f for this game, you know. The other players don't care about our guild here, but we're level 3 now. The Guardian's been leveled up. He starts out as this puny-looking monster, and then he gets a little bit stronger. He gets a little headband. He gets his horn growing a little bit on his second evolution. His third evolution, you know, he, he comes down to the ground, and his legs are out here, and his wings are out. And you can tell he's starting to look pretty cool here. <clears throat> so... Now we have a level 3 blessing, so we have attack percent wherever we're fighting, which is cool. And that's something that I have to purchase with the guild donations. So thanks for all the donations. We got plenty for these blessings, which is the only thing we can spend our money on right now. Got plenty of that. Um, so for the guild members, donate all your summon summoning stones. And if you're in a different guild, just donate all your, your spirit, I mean, actually. So you can go over here to give spirit. Currently, there's nothing else you can use this spear for. It's only for the guild. So give all your spirit as you're playing the adventure mode and getting this stuff. This is what helps level up your guardian here. So it takes everybody's contributions to get a strong guardian, which will be useful for guild battles later. So one thing I want to shout out real quick, because I'm so busy and I'm not going to be checking into Loon Saga. I'll, I will every day, but I'm not going to be able to micromanage it as well as I'd like to. I'm looking for a co-leader. So I'm sure, I'm hoping all the guild members will at least watch this video. So I'm looking, and I'm sorry for everybody who wants to get into this. I know you're big fans, and I would have accepted you earlier, but we're full right now, and I'm not going to start kicking people out until I start, until unless they're inactive and not participating in the guild like we want them to so a lot of people chatting playing this game con continuously and there's a feature to tell who's been active I think it's right here but this is broke right now so I can't really tell 
when the last time somebody logged in was. You know, it's going to be a requirement to log in every day. And then I'm going to start working through the guild list. I already have a wait list here. Let me pop this up. So this is the same as the Summoner's War wait list, but this is for Loon Saga. So this is not valid here. Um, so far we only have four members, but I think there's more people in the comments who would like to be members that I just haven't added yet. So these people are already waiting to get into the guild, and if you'd like to be on this wait list, uh, post in the comments your in-game name, and I'll definitely get you added. And as people become inactive or not meeting the other requirements that might be set for this guild at a later time, we'll start getting these people from top to bottom into the guild. That's the only fair way I can do it, so I, I apologize for everybody who just started playing this game and you, you're huge supporters and you, you really want to get into the guild. I, I do strongly apologize. So, just uh, since the global release a couple days ago, there's just been so many people applying for this thing. Anyways, uh, give your give the spirit always for the for the guild here. Um, I'm looking for a co-leader. I think I can promote somebody right now who can help me manage this guild and uh, that's what I'd really like to see. It looks like it's not loading right now, but it looks like I can promote and do co-master. So we're going to have two co-masters. So if you're interested in that and you're already in the guild, just uh, let me know what you'd like to add to this, the guild, and how you would like to help manage it. and. I'm taking applications pretty much, so I really appreciate the help if somebody would like to step up and help manage this guild during the days when I'm away and, and you know just posting notices and helpful tips, things like that. There's not too much you're going to be able to do as far as accepting and refusing people because frankly we, have, it's, we can only have 20 people and I'm going to manage that with the wait list. So you don't have to worry about doing that, but maybe uh, you know just kind of updating the notices and once the guild battles start I'm going to need a lot of help with that as well because we're going to have to schedule guild battles and try to make sure people are on at certain times and then initiate when we're going to fight and things like that so that's going to be the, the job of the co-leaders um, working together with me so thanks a lot for that I'd like to do some rare summons here you can, you can just see how I've been away pretty much the whole day it's been a super busy day this is the first video I've done today, but my mailbox is freaking full here. I have some rare summoning I'd like to do. Let's see if we can't find that card. I'm not even sure exactly why I got it, but I just click claim all on all this stuff. But if you have rare summoning scrolls, you have to manually select them, and I have way too many stamina stones. That's This is what's killing me. Everybody's giving me stamina stones. That's awesome. But I can barely even spend the 100 energy. Look, it's almost full already. I mean, I would have to sit here all day long just using up energy and stamina stones to work my way through this. And maybe someday I'll have the time to do that. I'm hoping I will. And then I can really, you know, I can probably get to level 40 if that's the max level. I think it is right now. So my characters are like 29 right now. So they're giving us tons of rewards for this game. There's no lack of things to do between the arena, the dungeons. I mean, very feature-packed game. So I do like that aspect of it. Okay, here we go. Finally found it. Sorry, guys. Okay, one four-star summoning scroll. So I don't have any four-star cards yet, so I'm pretty excited to see what kind of a four-star I get from this. Let's... Okay, finally. First four-star, it's fire. Inferno. Ignores the enemy's defense and attacks. So this is going to be a heavy hitting card, I think. I'm definitely going to level this up as soon as possible. Like I was saying before, I can't really comment too much except on the very first two star, two star and one star cards, whether or not they're good. So, I, you know, my advice, anybody's advice that you get, these are growth summoning scrolls, so those are used for leveling up monsters, and I don't really need to do that right now. I have inventory management problems as it is. I have 141 cards here. So, 
you know, once this game's out for a few weeks, I'm sure some people will have good tips on which cards are good, how to build a good team. But building a team, the, the, this game is so open-ended that, uh, let's take a look here. You know, there's there's going to be a lot of strategy involved and a lot of non-strategy as well because each of these cards, you know, it doesn't really even matter that much what the card does in my opinion. It matters more how strong the card is because the strength of the card when you level it up with the hit points and attack, that adds directly to the attack of your your characters and I think costumes and skills are super important too. So I haven't even touched on this guy yet. This was the first guy I purchased with the crystals I had in the game. Um, this dwarf Irwin guy. Um, so I went ahead and bought his costume here, which I thought was really awesome. And it turns out this is really awesome. It's a pretty OP costume. Just because of this skill here. Oh, not this one. This one. So after you go through five turns with this guy you activate loyalty two and then every time so for four turns which is pretty much it's only got a cooldown of five so after the fifth turn in battle this is pretty much always active so every time one of your characters hits he hits it also so it's pretty much like double damage almost for every single attack that one of your characters does after the cooldowns up for this. So this is a very powerful costume. I'd just like to point that out to anybody who's wondering whether or not they should get this costume. I for dungeon battles, it doesn't really speed him up because you still have to watch the animation for him attacking after everybody else's attack. But it, it increases your total amount of damage that you're doing tremendously. So I really like this costume here. Plus it's a you know, gives you a lot of hit points and gives you some pretty decent attack. Not as much as the fire one. So I've been really liking this character here. I haven't worked on... You can see how much money I have. I should probably just go ahead and buy the costumes for this character. But I think uh, the tier 2 costumes cost... Yeah, for this character you have to spend money to get the tier 2 costume. So I might be doing that. I'm not sure which costume I'm going to get for that character yet. I'm not as impressed with this costume as I thought I would be for Gerard here. I'm thinking about purchasing his fire costume, actually. Um, his wind costume here, you get a lot less stats. You get less uh, hit points and attack, which is a bummer in my opinion. But the reason I still went with it was because of the skill party will become immune to damage for two turns so this is really great the entire party can't be hit for two turns but it's got a cooldown of seven turns sometimes arena battles don't last that long to get this off usually they do so this this skill is usually very good but it only lasts for two turns and it's got a seven turn cooldown so it's not as overpowered as say the Irwin's costume. I think Irwin is a better choice. Um, but the good thing is you can buy these costumes with gold, where the Irwin, you have to spend uh, your mana, your, what, what are these things called? Crystals. So his, his main skill for uh, the fire guy, remaining hit points will be, be reduced by 20, I think it means 20%, and party's hit points will recover 20% over thir three turns. So this is more damage, he does heavier hits, and then recovers much hit points, so he can't be critically hit. So it's a trade-off, I'm not sure which one's better, but I just wanted to let you guys know this isn't quite as good as I thought it would be initially. It is good, but I thought it was going to be super good, and it really isn't. So yeah, you guys can see my screen here. You can kind of see how I've been playing. I got a few, you know, I don't want to go over individual cards, but I've been trying to max level and max enhance some of these cards and just use some of the skills the best way that I can here. Now, you're probably wondering a little bit on this. Why are you using this Water Shout when this is a good, a better card to be using? But this isn't an attack card. 
So one party member's attack cooldown reduced immediately and attack increases by 50% for two turns. So this is a good card. It's it's a it's a good support card, but it doesn't do attack. So what I was doing was a lot of auto battles where which is one mechanic I don't really like too much about this game. You can get three trophies from each dungeon scenario. So let's just take a look at that real quick. There's and it's always the same way to get each trophy. So if we just click on any one randomly here. So there's one trophy here. Now if I enter this, the first trophy is always clear without any members dying. So that's not a, usually too big of a deal, especially if you got Erwin attacking afterwards and you got Gerard with his skill. I haven't had any problems beating the levels up to this point without having somebody die. The second one, on the other hand, is defeat the entire board within 30 turns. So within 30 of your character's attack turns. So to do that on auto mode for the first stages, it's good to, you know, I, I highly recommend going after these trophies, so make it pretty far into the story mode, and once things start getting a little bit more difficult, come back to the beginning of the game and start working on these trophies. Try to get 24 out of 24 for all the areas. Start at the very beginning and just work your way up, getting all the trophies. So to get the second trophy for these areas, you only get 30 turns. You only get 30 attacks for your characters. So you don't want to have a ton of support attacks there that are just increasing hit points or decreasing the enemy's um, attacks. You want to have attack cards that are doing damage every time, especially if you're just trying to do this on auto mode, so that every time that your characters are up to battle, you're killing a monster. So that's a good way to get the second trophy here. The third trophy is always 45 total turns, so that includes the monster's turns as well. So that makes it that much more difficult. So slow cards are then pretty good for these three-star trophies. If you can slow down or stun the entire enemy team, that's going to help you get this third trophy. So those cards are good when you're trying to do that for the three stars. But in general, up until this point, so the first couple areas, I'll say, so like all the way up to level eight, maybe even a little bit farther, maybe some of these levels, if you just put high attack cards in on your characters, you shouldn't have any problems getting the two and three area trophies. So that's why it, I be, I'm not using that that support card on that green archer character. I don't even know their names yet. So just, that's just kind of a little general tip there. It's been helping me out. So I don't think I have any more really rare summoning scrolls to go over. Let's see if we can't get any three star cards out of this. Swan heal. It's a level nine so that's see this is level ten now. The level down here makes makes it whether this card is worth using to upgrade another card or if it's just level one, then it's just worth selling. You know, a level one card is not worth even using to upgrade another monster because it's going to cost you gold. Unless that other card you're starting to level is a level one card, then it doesn't cost as much gold. So a totally different system in this game than Summoner's War for leveling up your monsters totally different strategy at least I should say. So these are level, I'm getting level 9 swan heal, you know, that's going to be used to level up. Nothing good, 2 star, that was a bad heal card, don't like that. This rainbow card, I do like it, but it's only a 1 star, but it's it's a good card to use for arena fights. Behemoth, that's an attack card. I don't find it too overpowered, but it's a decent attack card, you know, reflects damage from that single enemy as well. Uh, this is going to be a fodder card. Brownie, more fodder, nothing special with him. So, all right, we're full on cards already. Inventory management problems, like I say. My energy is completely full. I have full arena. I don't even have time to, you know, spend all the points that I'm getting that I have right now. So, I think I'm gonna let you guys go. I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, so, apply if if you're already in the guild. Let me know if you're interested in being a co-leader. And if you're not in the guild and you'd like to get on the wait list, uh, let me know with a comment with your in-game name uh, right in the right in the chat area for the the bottom of the YouTube video. 
So take care, guys. I hope you're enjoying this game. And I'm not giving up on it by any means. I'm going to use up my energy tonight. I'm going to go through some more arena battles. Make sure you do at least 50 arena battles in case you guys weren't aware of this feature. Season 4 ranking. So for the rewards over here, it's important that you do at least the participation. Um, you'll get three 2 to 6 star summoning scrolls just for doing fighting in arena 50 times. So make sure you at least fight 50 times. Even if you're not winning, just auto through it. You know, try to spend your arena tickets. Then you're going to get tons more when you do normal mode dungeons. So that's important. Make sure you're doing 50 battles per week. So I think the seasons only last one week. Uh, what am I doing? I'm just clicking around randomly now. Let's go back to arena. I want I want to double check that for you guys. Yep, one week, so four days from today. Today's Friday, so it looks Monday, is that Tuesday? Looks like Tuesday this will reset, and then we'll be in Season 5. So, Best of luck, guys. Post if you're doing really good in Arena, or if you have some general tips for people in the comments below. Don't forget to read the comments, because a lot of the viewers have great tips for these games. So I'm going to let you guys go. Take care. Free-to-play gaming signing out for now.